Good afternoon and welcome to SL Design Lounge presented by Chicatani Lacroix. Chicatani Lacroix is a global branding company with over 25 years experience. My name is Richard Durstein and today we'll be talking about lead certification and sustainable design. Joining me is Michael Perez of Entermodal, a engineering company specializing in sustainability and lead certification. Michael, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, I guess first of all we should uh, talk about what is LEED design and what is LEED certification. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And basically it's a point-based system for rating green buildings. The key point about LEED is the first word, leadership. So it basically says that buildings that go for LEED are pushing the limits of what the industry does in sustainability. This point-based system is basically broken out into different categories that represent uh, 110 points. So 100 base points and 10 sort of extra points for going a little bit further. Those first 100 points are divided up into categories like things like um, sustainable sites, which represent where you're located, what you have available to you, what kind of, for example, um, stormwater management practices you do if you cause light pollution. It's also divided out into uh, water efficiency, so how much water you use, how much water you save. Energy efficiency is a huge component. At least one-fifth of the points represent energy efficiency and that obviously saves uh, gas and electricity. And then it also focuses on indoor environmental quality, so the quality of the buildings. We don't want to sacrifice uh, saving energy with uh, good indoor air quality and comfort. Finally, um, there's a section on innovation, uh, which goes into that extra 10 points. Um, so the innovation is, is for recognizing areas where you've gone above and beyond what the current system defines. And then finally, there's a, a new, uh, very recent addition to the LEED system, uh, which is called Regional Priority Credits. So that's uh, areas where you identify uh, LEED initiatives that are specifically important to your region and you can get extra credit for them. So this system allows design teams to um, achieve different LEED certification levels. There's Certified, which you require 40 points for, Silver at 50, Gold at 60, and then uh, platinum, you need 80 points. So there's a, a, quite a jump from gold to platinum. You really have to go above and beyond to hit platinum. Um, the system has been around in Canada since uh, 2004. Um, it was originally started in the United States, I think, around 1999 or early 2000s, and it just focused on office buildings at that time. And as it evolved, uh, they realized more and more areas where you could apply lead. And uh, here we are, I guess, you know, 10 years later since the U.S. system starts, six years since the Canadian uh, system had started. And the and LEED has, has, has evolved quite a bit since then. So now it, it has the ability to cover all types of projects, all types of building sizes. So what makes LEED stand apart from other building design initiatives? The main distinction I see about LEED is that, um, you know, any green design could have good intentions up front that you say, okay, I want to do all the right things and build an efficient building, buy the most efficient equipment and, and uh, design it to maximize sunlight. And you might have those good intentions going at, at the beginning. Where LEED says, sets itself apart is the accountability. So LEED is third party verified. And it's also based on the final product of the project. If anybody in the, who's worked in the building in industry knows, um, you know, you don't really get the building you started out with. It always goes through a, quite a transformation as you go through the process. I mean, you have um, budget problems that cut things out of the budget. You have uh, contractors that don't follow uh, what was put in the original specifications or design of the building. And then you have, you know, different parties that push and pull the design uh, and, and the whole process of construction. So by focusing at the final product and having that accountability that's third party verified, you have all the documentation and checks in place to make sure you actually have achieved something that is greener than a standard building. Uh, again, if you just uh, pick the right components when you begin, uh, doesn't mean your final product's going to end up actually being a green building. So Michael, you talked about green buildings. What might that experience be like? And, and I'm talking about the, the physical space. What kind of things would I expect within a green building? Or could I expect within a green building? Well, one of the aspects that we commonly talk about as an advantage to green buildings is that you would get more productivity out of the employees who work in a green building. And it might not seem obvious why, 
But um, you know, some of the lead points are related to the views in the daylight that the different occupants uh, experience. So for example, there's a point that 90% of the occupants in regular occupied spaces has a view to the outside. So, that, so the office space is actually designed in such a way that you have sort of glass partition walls or meeting rooms with glass on, on the doors. So you maximize uh, people's views of the outside and that makes them feel happier and, and have a, a better experience at work. And obviously if, if people quit or uh, are unsatisfied with their work environment, that's loss of productivity. But the, the actual feeling of, the, of what you would notice when you'd walk into say an office building that um, had some kind of sustainable design under lead certification is the lights. You would notice the lighting levels would probably be lower than you would typically imagine. And uh, most often, people have more task lights at their desk where they actually need the light. So, you know, designing more sustainably means designing more to your needs instead of what you could have. Um, for example, you have daylight sensors and occupancy sensors that turn the lights on and off depending if you're in the room or depending if there's sufficient sunlight. So, if you you know walk in a building and lights um, start to, uh, start turning on as you're walking down the hallway, you know that oh maybe this is a lead building and, and they're they're trying to design for sustainability. I guess one of the misconceptions that I've heard a little bit of is that lead um, is the materials and finishes, or, or it's a major part of the materials and finishes uh, within a space. But it's more than that, isn't it? it it's it's is it the whole building? It is, and I, and I think um, you know the, the materials and the space and, and the feeling of, the, of 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 when you walk into a green building is important. Um, but the, a lot of times it's the things you don't see that actually give you a lot of the value. See, when you construct a, a regular building, each individual component is installed by a different subdrate or a different organization, and they do their part and they leave and, and, and you get what you get. What LEED does is push it a step further and requires um, buildings as, it's a, as a prerequisite under the LEED system to actually do fundamental commissioning. So they look at all the different components and verify that they work together as the designers intended. This comes back to what I said in the beginning about how you can design a building to be green, but doesn't mean it's implemented well, right? So if you have different mechanical systems that have to work with um, certain occupancy sensors or lighting that has to work in, in, in different areas, you need a third party to come in and check to say, oh, actually lights do turn off when the sun comes out or the the um, uh, mechanical system does go into heating mode once we, once we pass a certain date in the year. So you don't truly see the energy savings until the building's operating at, at, at how it was originally intended. We've been talking a lot about new building construction. Um, how does that relate and how does LEED relate to existing buildings, retrofit buildings and, and um, the building shell itself? Oh, well, there's actually multiple uh, rating systems within LEED and they are sort of applicable to the different situations. So I mentioned already commercial interiors where you're fitting up just an individual space. Uh, there's lead for existing buildings and oper operations and maintenance. And that system focuses on, you know, you have an existing building and you also want to make it green to compete in the market with all the new buildings. So um, you do the certification and, and as a starting point, you actually have to show that you're in the 30 percentile of the best buildings in the market. So you have to take your actual energy bills and uh, compare them to an Energy Star database that, that tells you where you sit. And if you're below that target, then you have to make some modifications to your building to try to get within that 30 percent percentile that represents the best buildings uh, in the market. So, I mean, that system, obviously, you're more limited in what you can do because it's, you know, it's an existing building. So it focuses a lot more on the things you purchase, um, green housekeeping plans, uh, purchase plans, like, you know, alternatives to salt in the winter, and when you buy your bulbs, for example, you buy lower mercury, all kinds of initiatives like that that also have a, a large impact on a building, but you know, are, are within the limits of what you can do as an existing building. And to go a step further, actually, there's a, a couple of other systems that exist that relate to LEED, um, or I should say uh, uh, LEED rating systems. There's one for neighborhoods, actually, that's uh, just come out in the US. It's, it's almost here in Canada, uh, LEED for Neighborhood Development. So that looks at actually an entire neighborhood and gives you all kinds of points for thinking about uh, you know, how long will it take the average person to get the public transit? How many schools, how many uh, amenities do, does a person have within their neighborhood? And so it creates a, a more sustainable path for growing uh, whole neighborhoods before you actually make the lead buildings. Obviously you get points for having lead buildings within the community, but um, it is uh, quite an interesting approach to uh, sustainability on a bigger scale than just the building. So Michael, tell us, who's an ideal candidate for uh, a LEED certified space? Well, I'd say that you know, almost any building type is an ideal candidate, but I would say the people who are developing it or the people who are 
uh, going to make the building happen, they have to have the want to make it a, a greener building and see the benefits. You know, wh whether it be environmental, economic, you know, being a leader in the market, I think you have to do it for the right reasons and then you can achieve a building that's truly better th than the rest that you can be proud of and uh, see the results you want. So what companies are leading the way as far as being um, LEED certified? Who's really taken ownership of, of uh, the LEED initiative? It's funny, if you, if you ask me the question, say, three years ago, I could name four or five companies that were really uh, starting the market, but now, I mean, it, it covers so many different types of buildings and so many different types of industries, um, it's, it's hard to pick just a couple. I mean, from municipalities mandating it to entire areas of the Toronto waterfront, uh, demanding uh, lead gold and, and, and higher requirements, to universities requiring it, to uh, building um, maintenance companies uh, looking at implementing it, uh, retail stores, uh, schools, recreation centers. I mean, it's really across the board uh, becoming so popular that it's more about who, who's not doing it and, and why are they making that choice when they should sort of get on board and, and realize the benefits. So, in your opinion, what are the advantages of certifying for LEED? Well, I guess the obvious one is, is, is maybe it's almost the right thing to do. I mean, uh, the built environments, everything that represents um, the, the buildings we live in, uh, uses about two-thirds of the world's electricity that's produced and about one-third of, of all the energy produced, you know, not to mention using water, natural resources, and all that. So I think, you know, that's one of the main driving reasons why people do it and, and also they do it because uh, the market or the people they're trying to attract want those. I mean, in general, society is demanding people to be more accountable to their impact in the environment. So it sends a clear message. Um, I'd say you also should do it because you're going to get a better building out of it. I mean, you, you're you going to save energy, which saves you costs on your energy bills. You, you're going to, um, you can also actually get paid money for doing a lead building because there's incentives available from different organizations. Uh, we have the um, high performance new construction incentive uh, for uh, reducing peak loads on electricity and uh, better buildings partnership, for example, in Toronto. Uh, so both administered by Enbridge. I mean, they basically give you money for saving gas and, um, and peak electricity. And then beyond that, I mean, um, the true advantages, again, is you're getting a better building, you're getting better indoor air quality. And, and, it, and I know your next question is going to be about, you know, challenges. And I, and I think sometimes quantifying um, sort of the benefits of the indoor air quality, you know, indoor environmental quality, things like, you know, better human comfort, uh, better, uh, a more appropriate amount of, of oxygen. People feel like they're happier. They don't, they get less headaches or less sick time. Um, it's, it's really about creating a better quality building that operates better and saves you money. I mean, it's, 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 there's a whole, whole range of reasons that make it better, and I think it just becomes a win-win-win when people realize all the benefits. Um, I think there's this uh, misconception, again, of, of um, a LEED-certified building it would cost significantly more up front than a, a normal project. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Is, is that true? Well, I think what we've seen is... is for most buildings, usually they go for a you know certified silver or gold. Like I said, platinum, you're really spending uh, big bucks to, to go to that level. But uh, in general, most projects only have to spend, I'd say, three to five percent on top of their their total project cost um, to achieve lead certification. And you know that extra cost. If you're wondering, you know, why would people do it if they're not really uh, caring about the environment or they? They, they're not as concerned. I mean, I would, uh, my, a lot of the arguments we make are that um, your, your upfront, upfront costs are, are more than paid for because as the whole market um, certifies more and more buildings, what we're finding now is that building owners or, or people who rent offices are realizing that if I don't start um, either creating new buildings that are more environmentally friendly or take my old buildings and, and, and certify them sort of under, under lead e-bomb, then I, you actually might be left in, out of the game. I mean, if, if other companies are telling you that they're getting more productivity or people are happier, then the employees are naturally going to want to move to a better building. So you can regenerate the, the um, attractiveness of your, your existing building and you can also make sure that you're up there on the market to get the, the best prices for your uh, rental units. I mean, in Toronto alone, how many office buildings have been added in the last couple of years? That's a lot of rentable space. So uh, people will move from old buildings to new buildings, 
and, and, and so those old buildings still need to compete. And you know, more and more new buildings are going to be created who, who don't want to be uh, substandard to, to the new buildings. Great. Yeah. And I, I guess um, in conjunction with that, as more people are getting more LEED certified materials and, and, uh, and the cost of actually getting uh, those, those materials and, and, and practices into the building are becoming more cheaper as well. Oh, too. absolutely. I've definitely seen it myself. Um, that, you know, again, five years ago, talking about uh, drywall with recycled content and, and using fly ash in, in, ash, in uh, concrete was, you know, we really had to explain it. And, and these days, you talk to manufacturers and they're throwing you documents of, you know, we've already calculated everything. And, and, and I guess, you know, it, it, it's become really an opportunity for suppliers to set themselves apart from everybody else in the market to say, you know, we're the preferred, pro um, we're the preferred product for uh, lead projects where we already know what our recycled content of our materials are. We already have um, checked all the components in our assembly and, and none of them, um, um, oh, sorry, that's what I want to say. Um, so we've checked all the components in our products and, they, and we verified that they, they, we've maximized the amount of lead credit we could get for our product. So, you know, it, it becomes a marketing opportunity and actually it creates more demand and that, and that creates, um, you know, more recycling programs and more products created that are environmentally friendly and, and really pushes up the whole industry. And, you know, um, the original LEED system was written in 2004 and just a couple months ago they released uh, LEED 2009, which, you know, has learned from everything that has passed since then and, you know, they raised the bar higher. So, um, a couple of months ago before it was, it was released, I could tell you exactly, you know, you could achieve these points for recycled content and these points for, for regional content, for example, and now the market's completely changed. The, the, the bar is raised higher, so now I have to look for more products that will have recycled content and regional content if I want to make our, our point target. Uh, and it just pushes everybody to try a little bit harder. That's great, and, and I guess the environment is the ultimate winner. Yeah, I, I think uh, we all are the, the winners, and, you know, the, the environment's a big key in that. You know, over the last few years, LEED has really um, gotten momentum, and I think you've talked about the changes that have happened within the last four or five years. Um, you know, maybe you can give input or comment on, you know, uh, LEED as a brand and, and its popularity and, and, you know, how is it moving and how is it gaining popularity? Well, definitely in the, in the, con in the condo market, I know a couple of months ago a survey was done by uh, Nielsen Canada that asked you know, people looking to buy condos if um, green certification uh, would affect their decision in buying a condo or would they be willing to pay more. And over 80% on both questions, people did say they were willing to pay more and, they, and it would affect their decision. So I think um, when people are looking for a quality building, it, it is um, becoming more of a, a household name, but then not everybody's looking to buy a building, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's still growing. Um, and, and it really, you know, from my personal experience, you know, uh, relatives, friends who just know I'm in the building industry will say, oh, you know, have you heard about this thing, LEED? So, and it's not me prompting it. So it is getting out there. I know uh, even in popular media, I, Brad Pitt got on TV and talked about a LEED building. So, yeah. you know, if, if, uh, if mainstream people like that are talking about it, then, then the word is definitely getting out there. So if, if LEED is the uh, industry standard as far as building certification and, and indexing, um, and, it's, and we're looking to LEED to stay abreast of changing um, you know, construction methods, materials, um, where do you see it going in the next few years? Where is LEED heading? Well, I'd say you know, for the majority of the buildings right now have been focused on LEED NC, which is new construction, and uh, also you know, commercial interiors. Commercial interiors have also been around for a while where you're fitting up just an office. But I really see the, the, the growth being in existing buildings and as well as neighborhood development. I mean, when municipalities start realizing that they have a tool they can use to get developers to develop whole communities better, then I think that would really take off as well as, you know, like I mentioned before, existing buildings. Um, the, the system just came out maybe uh, under a year ago. And uh, I think there's new opportunities to ha have retrofit um, options so manufacturers to come up with ways to retrofit the building, make it more uh, sustainable, that are still being explored. So I see that as a real growth market. And again, because uh, the existing buildings, you have to prove in your energy bills that you're in the top 30 percentile of the most uh, energy efficient buildings in the market. Um, it's, you know, again, the, the, the bar gets pushed higher and higher. You know, how many modifications do I have to, to make to be in that top 30 percentile? So it, it comes back to that leadership, you know. Um, it's not a system that just says, okay, I'm not the worst building out there. It's a system that says, I want to be one of the better buildings out there and, and maybe even some of the best. So uh, again, the strength of lead is, is that first word, leadership. 
It's all about um, pushing the limits, pushing the bar a little bit higher, constantly improving, and and uh, you know it's very dynamic in a way. Um, as we we learn from buildings, uh, designing buildings differently, the, the industry will get better and better, and and uh, we'll end up with greener and greener buildings, and hopefully uh, make a real difference. So, Michael, your background is engineering. Yes. Um, how did you um, become involved in, in LEED certification and the LEED aspect of that? Well, actually, I, uh, I am an uh, engineer from University of Toronto here in, in uh, Canada. And, and after working in uh, the engineering industry for a while and in consulting, I uh, heard about sustainability and started getting interested and actually found a uh, master's program in Stockholm, Sweden. And um, so if you've ever been to Scandinavia, um, it's a great place to visit to see, I, I would say, the future of what cities and, and, and uh, communities will be, look like. Um, I'd, I'd say that maybe it'll go even beyond that, but it's a great starting place and it's sort of a target. Um, so I got a, a really uh, excellent um, idea of sustainability from, it was actually international masters of sustainability from the perspective of 25 different countries because all the students in that program were from different countries. So there's representatives from Brazil, from Brazil all the way to China and, and uh, North and South America. So um, after that experience, I, I moved back to Canada thinking that, um, you know, I wasn't sure where sustainability was at that time. This was back in 2006, and, and it was just really just starting up, and, and I found Intermodal, and um, now, these days, it seems like, you know, sustainability has always been around. Um, it's just had an explosion over the last couple of years. Um, so maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about Intermodal and the kind of work that you do. Sure. Intermodal is a consulting company devoted specifically to green buildings. We are actually working on 250 projects in Canada um, and have certified uh, over 60 buildings, that, which actually represents uh, more than a third of the projects in all of Canada and more than two-thirds of the projects in Ontario. Mm. I'm actually the division head of the Toronto office and, and predominantly working on projects in and around the GTA. Um, maybe you could take a minute and tell us about the kind of projects that you've worked on recently or that you're working on right now. Sure, I guess um, some of the stuff I'm most excited about is um, if you're familiar with the Toronto Waterfront organization, they're redeveloping the entire Toronto Waterfront and the West Onlands, just uh, near the DVP. And they've actually mandated lead gold, plus have added uh, a bunch of requirements that all the buildings have to comply with. So we're re working on, uh, right now, two condos and a social housing project. Uh, I actually think it's a retirement um, social housing uh, project in those communities. And um, yeah, it's quite exciting to, to not only have to meet lead certification, but sort of uh, go even higher. Like they have minimum energy targets, and they are in um, communities that have been planned for uh, lead for neighborhood development. So they've already done the first phase, and now we're actually putting buildings in there. So that's uh, quite exciting. But all across the city, um, we're working on office buildings. We, we completed the Bay Adelaide Center, um, M5B condo on King Street, a number of on, other condos on, on King. Um, and, you know, just there's a lot of exciting projects coming in the city. Almost every uh, project comes across our desk. It seems to be exceptional. I mean, with the Toronto Green Roof Bylaws uh, coming into play and the Toronto Green Standard, it kind of sets the bar high as well, where you're starting off at a place where so you have some mandatory requirements to lead to meet the city standards. Um, it gives you a great building point to even, to, to even focus on the, the finer details of, of how to make the building great. What are some of the design aspects that you've seen that are becoming popular or notarized because of LEED? Well, I'd say one thing that seems to come up almost on every project these days is um, to actually collect uh, rainwater on the roof of the building and use it for different purposes. So on condos, for example, for con on condos, for example it's mainly used for irrigation of the landscaping. But if you have uh, things like recreation centers or office buildings or using the flush toilets, um, they're using them for even the cooling tower. You know, cooling towers that cool the building, they use a, a huge amount of water. So um, it solves many sort of problems at once. It, it collects the storm water that you don't want to go to the, to the lake uh, directly, and then you're reusing it so you're saving uh, water at the same time. I've seen a lot of green roofs, uh, particularly in Chicago, where they've actually planted uh, grass or gardens on roof as well. That seems to be coming uh, yeah. very much a trend. Well, obviously, that, that's been pushed by the Toronto uh, Green Roof Bylaw, but I think the, the acceptance of people is, is, is uh, increasing more and more. That's becoming more of a, a common attribute just because people want to see it and, and to enjoy it. If, if anybody's been to the, the new green roof on, on City Hall, 
it is quite a, a park on, on a roof of a building, and it, I think it sets a, a different feeling to what uh, roofs could be in the future. Um, finally, Michael, I just wanted to, to point out, we actually have um, lead accredited professionals on staff um, for both Canada and the U.S. who are educated in um, um, specifying and have the knowledge of um, what it takes to get a lead certified project. But we, we actually integrate with you, and maybe you can talk about that uh, in terms of how that process moves forward into a, an actual a realized project. Sure. I mean, um, the accredited professional designation gives you the knowledge of, of to understand how the system works and, and, and what's required. Where our expertise comes in is actually guide uh, design teams through the process of a full implementation. So we make the recommendations, show you the best cost uh, effective way to achieve a, a lead building through uh, sort of energy modeling, showing you cost, uh, cost uh, benefit ratios, um, training contractors on how to document it properly and doing the full lead application for you. So you know, we're a full service organization that, that, that guides you through the entire process. I'd like to take this opportunity now to thank all of our guests for watching today and as well I'd like to thank Michael Perez of Enermodal uh, for coming in and joining us. Thank you uh, Michael, it's been very informative. At this point I invite you all to take part in our question and answer period. Please use the toll-free number that you're seeing on this web page to dial in and take part. As well, we will be posting links for you to download a copy of this presentation, as well as a PDF link to download a white paper um, that we have prepared on lead and lead certification, as well as a lead primer uh, overview on, uh, on what is lead. Again, thank you for participating, and we'll see you all next time.